Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Superstars Picks Reviews. Now, obviously, this match was picked by the same superstar, Sasha Banks. So I'm just going to jump right into this um, and just talk about the match. The match this time that Sasha Banks picked was from WrestleMania 22. Um, it was a women's championship match. It was women's champion Twist Stratus versus Mickey James. Now, I know I've reviewed this match before. Um... A year ago when I did the Retro Wrestling Review Series and I reviewed WrestleMania 22. But I'm back reviewing it again because maybe my perspective has changed on this match. This is kind of a way to give this match maybe more attention now. Maybe, maybe because I didn't give it as much attention in the Retro Wrestling Review Series. So I'm here to talk about this match yet again. So I'm just going to jump right into this. Um, Trish Stratus, Mickey James. Um, and I think a lot of... Male fans mostly will remember this feud for probably perverted reasons. Um, I think a lot of, and I think that's very fair to say, but I feel like woman fans will remember this, and I like this feud. I think it's probably it was, uh, one of the best women's feuds that's taken place. Um, but I won't, I won't get into like the perverted reasons I like this feud as much. I'll get into more of like the real reason I like this feud. Because um, pretty much what how this feud went down is Trish Stratus had been a long reign in women's champion. She was in the midst of a um, six women's title reign. I believe she had held this belt um, since about um, New Year's Revolution. I don't think she, um, I think she had held the belt about a, a little bit over a year, which was a pretty long damn title reign. But I could be wrong, but I think she, she had held the belt. I don't remember her losing the belt at all in 2005. Um, and there was a fact say seven on Raw. I think this feud started around the end of the summer, beginning the fall of 2005, when Trish Stratus was backstage. And we met, we've we had the debut of Mickey James, who was um, very new in the WWE. And they brought her in, and she was the um, number one fan of Trish Stratus. She loved Trish Stratus. She idolized Trish Stratus. And she wanted to do everything like Trish Stratus. And... You know how that kind of typically goes. You meet your number one fans. You want to do everything with you. And that's kind of what happened with Trish Stratus. Mickey James would help Trish Stratus retain the women's title, help her win matches, and they were like the best of friends, pretty much. And everything kind of seemed like it was normal. Everything seemed like it was going so well. But then, obviously, things started to get crazy. Um, and I think... Um, this is where I believe the believability kicks in because we see that number one that when someone's the number one fan of somebody, they go crazy. They do crazy shit, and that's exactly what happened with Mickey James. Um, we found out that Mickey James was actually a nutcase. Um, she was great. She was insane, pretty much. Um, she would get upset when Trish Stratus would team with any other woman on the roster. She would uh. You know, um, get upset when Mickey G when Trish Stratus told Mickey James to stay backstage. I want to defend my woman's title on my own. Um, but then it was, and but then they started to get more than that. Um, they would do skits where Mickey James would follow Trish Stratus everywhere. They did a segment where she tried to talk to him in the shower, and um, they. Uh, Mickey James asked to hand Trish Stratus would ask Mickey James to hand her the towel, and she would look over the towel and um, say, "Hey Trish, nice boobs." And then obviously we found out that there was something more to it. They did the whole mistletoe segment on the Christmas edition of Monday Night Raw, where Mickey James kissed Trish Stratus under the mistletoe, and Trish Stratus was like, "What the fuck's going on here?" So we found out that maybe Trish Mickey James liked Trish Stratus a little bit more than what we thought. She was a little bit. She wanted to get with Trish Stratus. She wanted to date Trish Stratus. Um, and, you know, obviously this led to, at first, a women's championship match at um, No Way Out. Not No Way Out, sorry. New Year's Revolution, where Trish Stratus retained the championship. And then um, it led to some drama with Trish Stratus' best friend, Ashley and Mickey James, which I don't even know if the Ashley and Trish Stratus ever really were best friends. I don't really care enough to look it up. And Mickey James um, and Trish Stratus was the guest referee, and um, Mick, Trish Stratus counted Mickey James' shoulders in the mat, and then obviously the same thing happened on Raw a few weeks later, except it was reversed. 
So then Trish Stratus was like, okay, this is just getting to be too much. I need my space. We're done. Um, this is getting to be too much. She kind of told Mickey James that if you want to be friends, come back when you're normal, pretty much. So they had one final tag team match on Saturday night's main event, and um, they won. I don't remember who they faced. And then Trish Stratus, and then Mickey James gets on the mic and says that um, she just wants to say goodbye and finally have better closure. She made, made out with Trish Stratus. Trish Stratus wasn't having any of this. And then we found out that she became the epic, psychotic heel that Mickey James was destined to be. Um, and I think everybody loved this. And Mickey James laid out Trish Stratus. She laid her out with her own finish of the Stratus faction. And they got even weirder when she kidnapped her best friend, Ashley. And um, Trish Stratus tried to do everything she could to save her. And threw into the post and stuff like that. But then Mickey James and her nose got busted open. And then Mickey James ambushed her again. Later out with the um, the Stratus faction and made out with um, Trish Stratus unconscious and was that psychotic heel. What really made it work, I remember, was she was busted open from the nose, but so then it ended up really working. So then we were off to the races at WrestleMania. Um, they had the match at WrestleMania. We had uh, Jerry the Kim Lawler and Jim Ross on commentary for that match. And obviously they were in Chicago. Now obviously this was kind of a little bit before the smoky wrestling fans kind of started to come into play where fans now just chant for whatever they want. Chicago was kind of was was kind of started that where you would go to Chicago and sometimes the faces would get they they pretty much would just chant for whoever they want. They would they would they would kind of they wouldn't really play along with the face and heel dynamic. So it was fairly strange. I'm just going to see who this is. And if it's uh, anybody, for that, I, I had to do this video once. All right, I just, I, 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 did, I apologize for that, but I don't get why now that I'm recording videos, the phone decides to win because usually, because I tried to do this once, and if it's like one of my family members, I don't want their voicemail being in this in the video because they get mad. So um, it's just someone trying to, you know, sell something. But anyhow, let's get to the match. But yeah, like I said, it was the the crowd liked Mickey but hated Trish. Um, I thought that was um, I thought that was interesting. And you know, the match with um, I've broken down the match. Trish Stratus beats the shit out of Mickey James in the beginning, and then eventually Trish Stratus goes for a kick while Mickey James is against the post. She misses and hits the leg on the post. Mickey James targets the leg of Trish Stratus. I thought she looked like a really good psychotic heel. The skirt she was wearing was really hot, too. I just got to make sure I roll that out there. And then Trish Stratus makes a comeback. I especially like the spot where she went for, like, her hurricuana that she likes to hit. Um, sending Mickey James off the turnbuckle, but Mickey James counters into a half boss and crab and, like, really breaks a leg. And I thought that was really cool. And then eventually uh, Trish Stratus mounts a comeback. She goes for the Stratus faction, but then Mickey James grabs her by the vagina and obviously this is cut from the DVD and the network, but then she does, I don't think I can do it with this hand, but um, she does that. And then, um, and obviously they did that call back when they were both in the first ever Women's Royal Rumble. Mickey James lays it up with the Mick kick, which now, which is, was at the time called the Chick kick and stole Trish Stratus' finisher and won. The finish was really weird because it kind of came out of nowhere. It didn't really look very effective. But overall, this match, I think, is a pretty good match. It really established Mickey James. It really put her on the map. So I'll have to give it three and a quarter stars. It's a pretty damn good main, uh, women's match at a WrestleMania. But what's kind of a shame is that we talk about the aftermath. This was the last legitimate women's match at WrestleMania because then they started to do the, the random diva tag matches at WrestleMania, the Playboy Bunny matches, the Lumberjill matches, and it was just... A bad time for the women's division after 2006, pretty much. Um, 2006, you could kind of see because Trish Stratus was gone after. Um, shortly after this, she had a final WWE match as a WWE performer. Um, and an Unforgiven 2006, where she won the women's title. And then Mickey James was still there, but she didn't really have anyone really to work with. And then Lita was gone from the company um, at Survivor Series 2006, ironically wrestling Mickey James in her last match. So the women's division just was sucked after this, and by the time it started to pick back up again, Mickey James was uh, gone from the company. 
Um, Mickey James, though, has been like a five-time women's champion. Actually, a six-time women's champion. Um, so, yeah, she returned and did a match in NXT, and now she's on SmackDown and Raw and stuff like that. And It is what it is. She's just kind of there. She doesn't really feel like I'm a part of the show and stuff like that. I don't know. But, yeah, uh, the women's division definitely picked up, but it's kind of a shame that this was, like, the last real legitimate women's match at WrestleMania. Um, this is when, like, and now they're having, like, this evolution. So, I don't know. But overall, um, Jerry the Kim Lawler and Jim Loss, you know where they went on to. I actually, um, I've said it in the past few videos. Kane's a part-time commentator, and so is J.O., so there you go. But overall, uh, Sasha Banks thinks that this match, too, she likes the feud where, like, Mickey James was that fangirl, but Trish Stratus was trying, like, not to hurt Mickey, uh, Mickey James. He didn't want to lose. And she talks about how this was just a great time in the women's division, which you can make the argument it kind of was. And that was pretty much uh, that. But that's pretty much it, guys. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. Please make sure you guys like, comment, and share this video for more content. And click on the bell so that way every time you upload a video, you guys get the notification for it. Make sure you guys subscribe. Do the same thing for CM Brothers and on the Talkinator YouTube channel. And that's pretty much it, guys. Talk to you later.